What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one, I'm going to be showing something extremely interesting at the graveyard on top of Hopewell Cave, as well as something that hasn't been seen nor discussed at all whatsoever around the Fallout 76 community. The reason why I know that is because I'm the first one to discover this, or, well, at least I know for a fact I'm the first one to show footage of this and discuss it. And I'm extremely excited to be sharing this with the Fallout 76 community. There's been a lot of hate being passed around, so I feel like genuine content like this, the community will actually enjoy. On that note, if you find this enjoyable, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like so this gets around the Fallout community more. Appreciate it if you decide to do so. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this now. Above Hopewell Cave, there is an unmarked graveyard. And up here, we can find three graves that we can interact with. As you can see, I'm currently up at the graveyard at the moment. And I'm going to be showing y'all these three graves, starting with this one. If you go near it, it says to activate it. However, when you go to activate it, nothing happens. And if you notice on this grave, there are a total of six flowers. I'm not exactly sure if that is signifying anything because at the moment this still remains a mystery. This could be something that we're going to be experiencing in the massive Wastelanders DLC to come. Or this could actually just be an unsolved mystery in the game. That's the reason why I'm actually making this video. I'm hoping to bring the file community more together to possibly solve this mystery. Anyways, that's not the only grave that we can interact with. If we head over here and go through the cemetery gate, which looks like it was broken, as you can see. And these two graves here, with a statue hand coming out of the grave in between them, you can interact with, as you can see. Once again, it says activate tombstone. However, when you go to activate it, nothing particular happens. There is a union hat located on top of this grave, as well as an asylum worker hat forest on top of this grave. And once again, I'm not exactly sure if what's on top of these graves are signifying anything, but like I just mentioned, there were some apparel on them that I just picked up. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles on this one with some flowers. And on this grave, there are a total of five candles. You can't make out the writing on this grave. I tried to make it out. I couldn't get anything. It just looks like a bunch of scribble to me. So, anyways, I decided to dig a little deeper with this mystery and make my first underground base. In case you don't know how to make an underground base, there are plenty of tutorials around on YouTube. I'm not going to exactly tell you all how to do that in this video because that's not what this is about. This is about this unsolved mystery that's above Hopewell Cave. Let's go ahead and go underground here. What I'm about to be showing you, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, is what I discovered. I am the very first person to discuss and show off this. So you are seeing and hearing about this for the very first time here on the Rifle Gaming Channel. As you can see, underneath the grave that we can interact with, there is a package. And it says, Mission 099-01 Package. And when you go to interact with this, it looks like it opens, however, nothing particular happens once again. However, this gave me a little clue over something else within this mystery. I decided to Google Mission 099-01 and the Fort Defiance came up, particularly the daily quest that we can get part of the enemy. Unfortunately, there was nothing else underneath any of the other graves that we can interact with. 
I did look. I have looked all over underneath here. But this is a big clue. But before I go ahead and get into more of this mission 099-01, let me go ahead and show you proof that you cannot see this package when you are above ground. Which means, sooner or later, oh goodness, we are going to interact with these graves. As you can see, you cannot see the package whatsoever. Not one bit. So like I mentioned before, this is a mystery yet to be solved. This could be something that we're going to be experiencing in the Wastelanders DLC, or this could just be an unsolved mystery in Fallout 76 that no player has actually solved yet. And it's been a year since release. And yes, these tombstones did say we could activate them since the beginning. Which makes me think that this is a mystery yet to be solved. Because Bethesda came out and said that they didn't even plan for Wastelanders to ever be a thing. They didn't plan on adding NPCs into the game. So this is pretty amazing to me that no player has actually shown how to activate these tombstones. Go ahead, try to search about this. And I guarantee you, you will not find anyone discussing about that Mission 099-01 package. I'm the very first person to show that off. So Reddit users and content creators out there that are currently watching this, consider passing this information around more so we can figure out this mystery faster on whether or not we can actually activate these tombstones. I do not mind if you have to use some of my footage, go ahead. You are free to use it. So, now, let's go ahead and get in a little bit more of the lore over this place and the mission 099-01. Starting off with the lore that we can find in the Hopewell Cave, and then we'll work our way over to Fort Defiance. So I'm down here at the entrance of the cave. And in here, we can find a holotape located on this crate here called Anthropologist's Holotape. Let's go ahead and listen into this. As my study of Hopewell Cave continues, I'm struck by the atypical nature of this Adena-based burial complex. The Adena culture generally buried their dead in large mounds and similar hill-shaped earthworks. Due to the primitive nature of the tools from 1000 to 200 BC, stone carving was not yet a part of their society. However, archaeologists who investigated this skull cave site removed remains and artifacts belonging to the Adena culture. I wonder if it's possible that the remains of the Adena people were moved to this location well after their society ceased to exist. For one culture to treat another's with such reverence is... it's unusual, at best. I will continue my research to discover more. So in that holotape, we learned a bit about the Adena culture. However, it didn't really give us any clues about the mission 099-01, nor how to activate those tombstones. I just thought I'd show that one just because it's right here at Hopewell Cave. And, well, the graves are right above this cave. Maybe some of you can get some different insights from it. As for me, though, I didn't really get much from it that has to deal with activating these tombstones. However, if we go all the way down to Fort Defiance, which is located right here, this is quite a trek from this place. But inside here, if we go up to the fourth level, which, by the way, you have to complete Recruitment Blues side mission. That's involved with the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just simply research it. There's a lot of information about it out there. But yeah, that'll gain you access up here. And up here, we can find a terminal that has a lot of information about the Mission 099-01. It's up here on the fourth floor at the end of the hallway on the right. In this room here, we can find Scribe Grant's terminal. And on this terminal, as you can see, the first thing that pops up is Last Plea for 099-01 Draft. And when we go to click this, as you can see, we get some information that reads, I'm not the scribe you need, but 099-01 isn't my idea. It's the last message we got from those geniuses on the West Coast. We need to do this. The automated research program is solid. It can conduct literative research on Scorch Beast and 
find their weaknesses. Just two men could run the operation out of Vault Tech University. We may die, yes, but someone's got to figure out how to destroy these once and for all. Don't make it so Taggarty died in vain. Pretty interesting. And if we go down here into stored logs, as you can see, we get some more about this mission 099-01. Let's go ahead and click on the urgent one first. This one reads, we are in the trench we've dug. Grant, telling everyone mistakes were made doesn't help. Yes, we need to know more about Scorched Beast. 099-01 is vital. But let's say I pull out even two nights to run this mission. What happens then? Every time we spin up the Sonic Attractor, it's a life or death struggle to keep a lid on the Scorch Beast. Take out two people and we are dead. All of us. And if we die here, Avalacha dies with us. Anyways, the next one, which is follow up. This one reads, we don't have the manpower to commit to 099-01. Look around, Taggarty took our best with her on touchdown. If they are not back yet, they are not coming back. But the skies are clearing. We don't need to know more about the Scorch Beast. They are dead, and a lot of that's because of your work. Be proud, and rest easy, soldier. Hmm. Anyways, the last stored log about this mission reads, 099-01 was run once, and we lost good men. Another run at this does more than risk our brothers' and sisters' lives. It risks turning the responders into hostiles. We can't afford that now, out of all times. I keep making allowances for your background, but we are a military outfit. You've made your case. It's been rejected. I don't want to hear another word about this. So in this one, they mentioned that they did this run once and they lost good men. Could perhaps that run that they did be the package that we saw in the grave over above Hopewell Cave? I'm not really sure, but the information is pretty interesting. There is one more thing that I found that has to deal with this mission. If we get off this terminal, and head into this room over here, which this is how you start the daily quest, Heart of the Enemy. As you can see, there is Mission 099-01 Orders. And this reads, Strike Team is to infiltrate Vault Tech University and get to the Automated Research Lab. Team is to get to the ARL, which once again stands for Automated Research Lab, and get it functioning by any means necessary. Once the mainframe is online, upload ARF-001, Two members of the team are to stay behind and secure the lab. Viable Scorch Beast DNA samples will be sent after facility is online. Infiltration and secrecy is paramount. Taggarty orders no hostile contact with responders. If fired upon, orders are to regroup at Thunder Mountain and await further orders. Personal note, Squire Montgomery's team never made it back. Be careful. Who knows what's waiting for you at Vault Sec University. If Montgomery got the automated research lab functional, the passcode is hope for future. Scribe Grant. Okay, so last bit of lore that I wanted to go over before completely wrapping up this mystery is Scribe Grant's holotape, which can be found at the bottom floor of Fort Defiance. So once inside here, you're just gonna to want to head this way and as you can see, there is a holotape on the ground called Scribe Grant's Plea. I'm gonna go ahead and play this. If you're hearing this, stranger, I'm dead. The Brotherhood is dead. But I'm relieved. Relieved there is someone, anyone, alive. I honestly don't care if you're Chinese, American, or whatever. You're a human being. Listen, I don't have much time. But the Scorched are more of a threat than you can ever imagine. You have to find a way past the security I installed. If you're former military, all you need is your government-issued military ID card. If not, find a way. I know, some ghost probably isn't very persuasive. But look past your own skin and consider there's so much at stake. We did. And that's why I'm going out to die. Ad Victorium. Scribe Grant signing out. So from that holotape, we now know that Scribe Grant did go outside of Fort Defiance. And, well, I'm assuming that he did die like he said he was going to do. Also, we got a little bit of extra knowledge over gaining access to the elevator. Which, once again, you're going to have to complete Recruitment Blues 
to be able to get in there and head up to the fourth floor. So this is all really, really interesting, and I wanted to share it with the Fallout community because, once again, there has been a lot of negativity stirring around the community. I thought this would be something different from what you are typically hearing about, which is just news over negativity. So if you all found this enjoyable, once again, consider leaving a like, and I would love to hear your all's thoughts about this. It's one of my main reasons over making it, to bring more awareness over this mystery that's still in the game. If you're a Reddit user or a content creator, once again, you're free to use any of my footage, and please feel free to pass this information around even more. Sooner or later, we will solve this, I have a feeling, and once again, I think we can already solve it since it's been in the game since the beginning. I don't think we have to wait for technically Wastelanders to come around. But yeah, that's about wrapping up this video, everybody. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. If you did, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like. That would be greatly appreciated because it helps get this information passed around even more. Until next time, everyone. Peace.